All right. I'm going to do a video about <coughs> a stove that I'd like to make here. I've made one before, but I want to do a little different on this one. It's a fence post top. Put a pole on there, and your pole goes to the top, and that's where your fence hangs from. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this up inside uh, here somehow. And I'm doing a locking on this side because this is the side I'm not going to be using anymore. Actually, I'm going to make a little more room out here. This is the part that's going to get cut off, actually. It's just this back part here. So, <clears throat> I don't really care if I crush it. I'm only taking the top round part. i got a hacksaw. And i got a blue background here, so because, uh... Otherwise, it'd be too hard to see, I think, so... Part. Cutting that off. This is the harder part here, that roughness there. We want to file it down smooth, but we don't want to crush this. So we've got to be a little gentle how we do that. If you saw a little closer with the hacksaw, which isn't that hard to do. That's as far as I'm going with that thing, so... Keep right with this. Okay, now that we've completely filed the bottom off, and it's nice and smooth, and there are a couple little spots on the top that I want to file down real quick here. Um, I'll try and bring it up closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, right there, a little bump, and right there's a little bump. And I'm just going to try and knock those off really quick. Not big bumps, they're just little bumps. Just, I guess, in the manufacturing of these things. They get a little... Some are different. I usually go through and I grab one, and I try and find one that's pretty smooth. I don't want anything that's going to be too much bumping to knock down, so I go through the pile and find the best one. So that's basically my stove. The difference is I'm going to put a uh, piece of felt in here, like this. I'm going to get it cut. I haven't cut it yet. And I want to get the right size. So the height I want is like that. So that's a good height right there. But the rest of it's not that high, so I need to get another piece of felt and cut it down. So I want it sticking up a little bit above it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'll bring that back over and we'll uh, put that in there. And I'm going to have it go almost all the way around, but not quite. This stove is going to be a little bit like uh, uh, Smoke Eater 908's uh, hiker stove. Not quite the same. Uh, I think he calls it hiker. Yeah, hiker. A little different because it's going to have the same uh, idea with the felt. And I have a inlet jet that I'm going to put in the side of it. And these walls are pretty thick. Actually, it's not a true vision of how thick they are, but they're pretty thick. Uh, that's got a butt bubble on top. They make a nice little stove. Um, and the neat thing is they're easy to find a plastic lid for. I think I have a Play-Doh lid that fits on this style of thing. So that's good to seal it up and take it with you. And they're indestructible. You can't, there's no way to break this. So they're really nice. And they don't weigh nothing. I'll have to get out my scale and wait for you guys when I'm done. All right, let me get the felt. I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut some felt here. Uh, I have a big sheet of felt. It was 3 by 3 feet. I bought a large section of it for, uh, this is carbon felt, not just felt, I'm sorry. Carbon felt's different. I bought a large section for, I think it was 25 bucks I spent total on everything. So, I have a lot of extra felt laying around here. So that's a good cut, good. And I usually just mark it with a black magic marker, it's not so hard to see. Uh, I've heard of it, a gray magic mark, a gray permanent marker works better, but I don't have one of those, so I just use the black permanent marker. And there's my felt. I'm going to run that around the inside there and see if I made it too long. It looks like I might have. Yeah, it's actually overlapping a little bit, and I don't want overlap, so I'm going to cut off about that much of it, just to get it down to what I want. Stuff cuts just like felt at the 
store, so. Let's see how much that gives me now. It's actually a little taller than I want it to, so I may cut it down a little more. And it's still a little closer than I wanted it. I want to leave a little spot for the oil alcohol to shoot in to the inside. That's close. I may just go with that because they do shrink after you burn them a while. I am going to make it a little shorter though, I think. Cause that's sticking up a lot more than I wanted it to. So I'm going to take off about a little less than a quarter inch there. And I turned as I came down to the end down here, so let me fix that. Something like that. I'll make it at the bottom half since it's got a funny groove in it now. See how it goes here. Yeah, that's about how much I want sticking out right there. So that'll do. I think there's enough gap in there once it shrinks up a bit. So that's that. Get all this felt out. Alright, uh just want to show you what I think in here. The uh to put the nipple in the side of this, uh to get the threads that work with this, I have a <coughs> tap set here. Uh tap and drill countersink set. This is a unique set. It's kind of the cheap way to go at this, but what it has is it has drill bits that have a tap on them, threads on them. I don't know if I can get this close enough to make it out for you guys. Probably not. Anyways, these are threaded so that when you drill it out, it actually it puts the thread in there too. And what I always like to do is I always like to, I've drilled a couple of these uh, taps into this canister here. And I always go in and I find the right size and make sure I got the right one. And this is the M4 times 0 0.70. And that's this bit here. So I make sure that's the right one because it does stay on the side of it in case I put it in the wrong spot. M4.07. So that's the bit for that uh, threads on that nipple. I'm going to go ahead and I kind of got this off here a little bit. I'll get some uh, alcohol on there, and that'll get it off the rest of the way before I set it on fire. It'll just burn. I'm going to go ahead and drill this in here. I don't want it all the way at the bottom, and I don't want it all the way at the top. I want it kind of right in the middle area. So that's where I'm going to put it in it. I'll set up the camera on that to show you how that goes. All right. It's, the drill didn't work. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you the drill. Basically, I drove this through here and then threaded it in and out but the camera didn't record when I did it, so that's been drilled uh, with the threads in there. And now I just need to give it a little bit of flat area around there. Give it something to seal on. Because it's a rounded edge, it won't seal if you don't have a flat area right there. You don't want to take too much of the meat off of it, but you just need a flat area to seal on. And that's my goal, is to find a flat, smooth area all the way around it, which that looks like it's pretty good. And then I just thread this in here. If you do too much, you end up... If you do too much, more than, much more than what I have uh, there, now you can see it. If you do much more than that, you end up thinning the wall out too much. So what I need to do is I need to get a pair of pliers, and we're going to be back over here for this. i get a pair of pliers here. Just anything will do. I'm going to grab onto this thing a little bit. It would be nice if I had the right tool for this, but I don't know where it's at right now. And I just tighten that in. Until it hits the washer. And then I need to get it just tight enough to where it's flat up against that surface there, because... If I don't have it flat up against that surface, it will just leak. Now this is aluminum. And, well, I'm sorry, that's brass, and the other part's aluminum. So I don't want to over-tighten it, because it will strip out pretty easy if you do. So there's the stove, basically. All done. We'll just need to slap a hose on it and a fuel bottle and we'll have ourselves a little stove so I'm going to go ahead and get a hose and a fuel bottle and we'll demo it 
Now I've actually actually got a, ho a fuel bottle with one of these uh, same types of nipples just uh, sealed right into this plastic lid here. I kind of melted the lid with it, got it hot, and just kind of screwed it right into it. So it's not a great seal, but it works pretty good for what I'm doing here. So I've got a little bit of hose here. Silicone hose, I'm sorry. Not just any old hose. This I've got uh, from a hobby shop in the uh, RC car area. They have for the fuel, for the jets and such, I think this goes far for the RC cars. So this is a bit of a short hose, so it's going to be interesting to fill with this, but it'll work. So it will just squirt right in. Let me see if I can tilt it so you can see it working. Can you see in there? Oh, I almost had it right there. See, it just kind of squirts right across. What happens is, and I don't have much in there, I have about, oh, I don't know, eighth inch across the bottom of it right now. But I'm going to turn some lights down a little bit here. Let the camera... Oops, hold on a second. Is that enough light? Yeah, it's enough light to show you. Just real quick here. Lights right up. You can see the... And I can add fuel to it. Now, it'll only take fuel up to the point where this is at, and it sucks the rest back out. So, you're never going to have fuel above that line there, except in the carbon felt. So, it's not a, not a full burn, but that's why it has the remote fuel. I don't know how long it'll burn. We'll find out, because I just made it. Um, we'll do some tests on it and see what it does. Now, the unique thing about this is you have to have a pot stand. Let me see if this one's tall enough. Uh, it should be. Is it round enough? It is. So it doesn't take much of a pot stand. The bigger your pot is, obviously, the... Oops, can get hot. The bigger your pot is, the bigger your stand has to be. So I'm going to lower the camera down a little bit, actually. And uh, let's see how the flame looks with the pot stand on there. That's a pretty small pot stand. You could go a little bigger than that if you wanted to. But, you know, whatever fancies you're, you like, unique, and you just shoot more fuel in, and it sucks the extra back out. So, you can see how it really blossoms out underneath of the stove right there. Makes a pretty good um, flame. 